Chris. Keep it short, you know lunch is around the corner. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't say that. Okay. Uh, Chris Ben is, is, is a good friend. He's, he's a few mentors, he's one of them. Uh, thank you for coming. He has a lovely bride. Uh, and five, six, seven minutes now. <laughs> Yesterday, uh, Eli e Eal took me down to the Chinook and went inside, no one else was around, and something happens. You look at the uh, interior, and the, uh, the rows of seats facing each other, they're so close, and you, you imagine guys geared up, kitted up, good young guys, and that guy has a portrait of each one of, each one of our guys in each chair. Then I'm saying, what am I to make of this? I go up in the cockpit, a small cockpit. Never been a Chinook before. And there's a picture staring at me of the pilot, and a picture staring at me of the co-pilot. I turn back and I get these feelings. Something's happening. It's private, and it's really good if you're alone in there. It's bad too. Whether it was my gut or it was in my heart, something was going on. And I couldn't put my arms around it. And I said this F word, tragedy can't be just left to be a tragedy. Something good has to come from it. How do you make something positive out of something so negative? How do you make a coffin a cathedral? He has. Fifty years ago, I was an officer in Underwater Demolition Team 21 and fulfilled my childhood dream to be a Navy frogman and had a great time. I wasn't a SEAL. Uh, in fact, the SEALs were pretty low profile and didn't even know what, whether they were going to last. And look at what they've become. Look at what they have become. They've become the standard for every young man in this country. They don't look to God, they look to SEALs. The SEALs are number one in the hierarchy of importance to young males. I'm here because of three people. One is Eyal, this crazy, unique Israeli Jew, whatever it is you call him. <laughs> <laughs> Captain Drew Bissett, my Ardak swim buddy. I had the great honor of uh, working with him as he was starting this whole journey for all you guys with my rescue dog, Curtis. I remember orienteering up in the woods with you guys and this dog running way ahead and ranging. If you ever know what a dog does, he ranges. He does a figure eight and then comes back to you. I shared that. And then there's my wife, Christina, who's probably the number one retail mind in the country, and unfortunately, my boss. <laughs> okay, hang on. We're going to uh, some pretty important places, so be patient with me. If you can't hear me in back, raise your hand, because it's all important. I've done my best to give you what I can. So I say, listen, no gum chewing, attention on deck. <laughs> Extortion 17 screams to us, not in vain. Well, how can something so terrible be not in vain? I'm going to try to answer that as best I can. Never in vain. Never in vain. That should be our credo. We will not allow things to be in vain. Someone special is the calling of the U.S. Navy SEAL. Be someone special. Be someone special. In life, it is not easy to be special. It is not comfortable to push a young body beyond its limits to where the mind has to follow. It is not easy for old people to be special. It takes work. I had the honor of assisting Captain Drew Bissett with his Ardek. This guy is so honest, there must be something wrong with him. <laughs> he has not quit helping sealed candidates for 25 years. And here we stand, still at it. They are his sons in a way. You are his sons in a way. I thought about the three people that got me here. The three things that they have in common. That's Drew, Eyal, and my wife. One, they're honest. 
two, they don't accept mediocrity. And three, they care. They care. A former Ardak graduate of ours was flunking his five mile times ocean swims off San Diego. Back on that Thanksgiving, 15 or so years ago, I put him in the Norwalk, Connecticut YMCA pool and quickly corrected his kick. One small correction and his world changed. And I thank all you mentors because one small correction can change a young man's life. One small correction and created this young man's life. He ultimately became the operations officer of SEAL Team 6 because of that one kick correction. It's crazy and beautiful. So one small correction of any sort in our lives can have a major, major impact. Nothing's better than uh, going to Bud's. Nothing's better than Hell Week. It allows you to swear and curse and laugh and feel miserable. And guess what? It's not bad. In vain, never in vain. Helping someone is never in vain. I want to read you a chapter from one of my books. The title of the book is 1-800-ONLY-FOR-LOVE. All my books are 1-800. I wrote this a long time ago. Never had any idea that I'd be invited here, nor to talk. It's called, this chapter is called Extortion 17. Love takes so many shapes and circumstances. Puppies are the best. Nope, kids are until they do wrong. How do we love them out of their predicaments? Here in the USA, we have most all the freedom we need to make sure love finds an answer. Love that is easy and love that is tough. In our country and most Western cultures, love is free to be. There are some rules and regulations, but nothing like in the Middle East and Asia. On August 6, 2011, a Chinook helicopter was shot down, maybe ambushed by the Taliban in the mountains of Afghanistan. 30 lives were lost, 15 of them from SEAL Team 6. They were already in landing mode, 100, 150 feet off landing. The code name <laughs> of the Chinook was Extortion 17. What's love got to do with it? Ask the mothers and fathers. The Middle East is a crazy world that is trying to destroy our freedom, our education, our nation, and our love. Young men in the military get it. We often do. We love love. What price are we willing to pay for it? Without the rule of law, we have chaos. Without love, we have chaos. Love is good and can do more good than anything else when not corrupted. These men who died were great lovers, great lovers of freedom, justice, and good. There's also Mike Monsoor, Michael Murphy, and so many others who sacrificed themselves for the love of a brother teammate. Google their stories. What about all the guys who come back with PTSD after seeing things that no one should see? They see what a total lack of love can be. They see evil. We send lovers in harm's way. Will they ever be able to love again? Today, so few are willing to go in harm's way. I'm afraid for our world and for our country and for our families. Values are no longer taught. Tough love is tough. It is always necessary. No is now a bad word. Feelings and political correctness rule. Have we gone soft? Are we clueless? A mother gives birth to a son, holding him close until she has to let him go into the world. Love and fear commingling. 
Life is full of danger. What is in vain? What is that? We must say never, never in vain. We must make good come out of everything. We can't leave good to evil. We must turn coffins into cathedrals. I started writing three years ago, 10 books, over 580 chapters. I had never written before. I was thinking, did my daughters really know who their dad became? There has to be more to all our stories than smiley pictures on the wall. Obituaries say nothing about a person. Memorial services don't even skim the surface. We have to leave something behind for generations to come so they know where we came from. All of us should write letters to the future from the past. Can, can you imagine a great, great grandkid reading those letters? It's not going to be a Facebook. It's not going to be videos. It's not the same as reading a letter. My chapter subjects always circled around values, around what is really important, and subjects that are no longer politically correct. We go to war to correct what is wrong. We go to war to correct what is wrong, to say no to evil, to say no to evil. I write to say no to evil. My books are very religious, but seldom mention God or Jesus. Chapters are just two pages. <clears throat> PC in my vocabulary means parables camouflaged. <laughs> world War III has already started in our world, in our nation, in our homes. Listen to what this chapter from 1-800 for SEALs only says. It talks about what we live and die for, life and death, and are not in vain. Excuse me, I got an old person's dry mouth. <laughs> That's a real nuisance. <laughs> this is short. <laughs> but better. Listen. Mike Monsoor, this is called the grenade. This is really important. Mike Monsoor was a Navy SEAL. Mike won the Congressional Medal of Honor. Mike is dead. You see, he, fellow SEALs, and Iraqi soldiers they were working with were on a rooftop on September 29, 2006, in Ramadi. A live grenade appeared. All would be killed. All would be killed or injured. Mike reached deep inside where truth, where truth lives, and dove on the grenade. His defining choice, choice. God bless you, Mike. Teammates were saved. They hammered their tridents onto his coffin. Most of us are never asked to make that kind of decision. Really? I'm not so sure. Mike defined choice. He defined what serving is. He chose to serve his buddies with his life. He said, there is black and there is white. He said, there is evil and there is good. You want a debate? Then go in a corner and hang an idiot sign around your neck. I'll bring you some animal crackers in an hour. <laughs> Okay, I feel better, but this is all too important to dismiss quickly. Mike became the role model of all role models in that instance. The same can be said of Michael Murphy and unseen others who made it back. Every moment of every day, something bad happens. Every bad thing is witnessed by someone. Every bad event is initiated by some bad choice. A person is responsible for that choice. Think about it. People make evil possible. A grenade is a really bad thing. But what about the small grenades of life? Does a lie ever have the potential to cause great harm? Does a lie damage the liar, much less the person who is lied about? We all know there are a bunch of sins I could list, and then there are the famous commandments I could refer to in helping to find things that cause harm. And how about the simple swear word that begins with an F, uttered in the earshot of a young child. The first time that word would ever be heard. Is there any way to know what C 
what seed may be planted of an innocence lost. Would you want that responsibility? Was this not a potential grenade to this young life? Maybe. Who is to know? In fact, every wrong thing we witness in the course of a day is a potential grenade to someone. Maybe we should look at life through Mike's eyes and react with holy instinct and attack. Or do we, out of habit and political correctness, look away and busy ourselves with something else, some work task that is more important? Or maybe turn up the volume of our head songs and sing Chasing Pavements along with Adele. I want us to give Mike the Medal of Value. That medal can only be created and given to him by our actions. Here, Mike, I did this because of you. Your example made me do it. I want to be true to my inner core and see more many grenades in the course of each day and write them. Stop them in their tracks. To tell the person who perpetrates that they are doing wrong. I want to do it out loud so others hear. Too bad if feelings are hurt. Too bad. Take the criticism and be proud. It matters. Be humble. Every sin is a grenade. Do something about it. Thank you, Mike. Thank you, Extortion 17. Hoo-yah. Just a chapter. Okay, finishing. Just about finished. Got three cents. Go with it. Go with it. Those Israelis, you know. <laughs> to be someone special, you have to endure some form of hell week. Someday, sometime. You have to have values. You have to have integrity to get through. Not quitting is not in vain. Helping someone in the smallest of ways is not in vain. Wiping a tear is not in vain. Ennobling a death is not in vain. Our love is not in vain. Look what Eol and Drew have done. Look what they have done. I talked about Coffin to Cathedral. Do you know that some young Israeli boy just built a cathedral? Do something special each day. God bless you all. God bless America and God bless Extortion 17 and their families. Amen.